name is Eric. My pronouns are he, him, his, and I am a poet that teaches with Snow City Arts. Thank you for inviting Snow City Arts into your room. Today, we will work together to compose a short poem. You'll be able to do it even if you have never written a poem before. Today, I want to show you a technique called erasure poetry. Erasure poetry is a form of found poetry wherein a poet takes an existing text and erases, blacks out, or otherwise obscures a large portion of the text, creating a wholly new work from what remains. Erasure poetry may be used as a means of collaboration, creating a new text from an old one, and thereby starting a dialogue between the two, or as a means of confrontation, a challenge to a pre-existing text. So this means that you're creating a poem, but you're not actually writing anything yourself, which might be a strange way to think about poetry. Erasure can take many different forms and can work on many different scales. Some erasure poems are just a single page taken from a book, a newspaper, a magazine. Some poets have taken short books, old books that they found in used bookstores, and they've covered over each page to create a whole new collection of poems. Instead of covering over sections of a source text, a poet might literally erase portions, leaving negative or blank space surrounding the remaining words and phrases. Here is a piece of text the poet Jordan Abel, a member of the Niska'a people of British Columbia, erased. He takes pages from the book Totem Poles by anthropologist Marius Barbeau and erases portions of it. Barbeau's purchasing of totem poles and other sacred items from the indigenous people that he studied contributed to the loss of those cultures. Abel's own erasing becomes a metaphor for Barbeau's erasing objects from a culture. The negative or blank space is a reminder of the blank spaces the anthropologist left behind. Here are more examples. Ronald Johnson, went through the first four sections of John Milton's epic poem, Paradise Lost, erasing all mentions of God and Satan, leaving behind a poem with a completely different set of emphases. Tracy K. Smith erases parts of the Declaration of Independence in her poem, Declaration. Uncovering a poem about the oppression of black people in this country finding it within the founding document of this country. Some poets will play around with the opacity or level of transparency of the source text. In her poem called Nets, her erasure of Shakespeare's sonnets, Jen Bourbon chooses to let the reader see a shadow of Shakespeare's texts, keeping it connected to the history I want to show you how to use Microsoft Word to utilize these techniques. You can also experiment with other word processing programs to achieve the same effects. Okay, let's get started. I'm gonna search for Project Gutenberg, which has tens of thousands of free eBooks available to anybody. So click on Project Gutenberg and I'm going to look up an author named Virginia Woolf and see what selections they have of hers. There are a few. I'll just click on Night and Day, and then you want to click on Plain Text. And here you have the publication information, and let's just scroll down, and I'm just going to somewhat randomly choose a paragraph. So I'm going to select that portion of text, and I'm going to copy and paste that into Microsoft Word. I want to choose Keep Text Only, and then I'm going to bump up the text size just a little bit. And then I'm going to click Format, Text Effects, and then click on Text Fill. And here there'll be this slide instrument that can play with the transparency of the text. You'll see how it can fade the text completely out. That's 100%. I'm going to put it at about 50% so I can make my erasure. 
I'm going to select the words and phrases that I want to be completely visible and then put it to 0%. So Catherine stirred this strange. Um, I like how thin and wind will sound together. And why did she do this? Out of curiosity. So I've selected the text I want to be completely visible. So now I'm going to select the text that I want to be completely transparent or somewhat transparent. So 100% is completely transparent. Let's see what it looks like when everything around my chosen words and phrases is completely transparent and I create a lot of negative space around the text. So now this looks like the examples that we saw from Tracy K. Smith's use of the Declaration of Independence and Ronald Johnson's radios. But if I bring the text surrounding my choices to about 80%, it's going to look more like Jen Bourbon's versions of Shakespeare's sonnets that we look like and uh, Sight and Sigh by the poet Travis MacDonald. And you can play around with the transparency and whatever looks best to you, make that choice. You want to save your document. There we go. And then I'm going to type where I got this paragraph from. So erasure from Virginia Woolf's night and day. So next I'm going to show you how to use another online tool to create erasure. Michael used the photo editing software called Photoshop, but I want to show you a web-based version. You don't need to download anything, you can just use it through a browser, it's called PhotoP. You'll click New Project, Create, and then you'll drag from your desktop the text that you want to use. It's just a Word document, so I'm going to use the text that I used for the Microsoft Word erasure. I want to create a new layer, and over to the right you'll see Layer 1, and I'm going to drag an image that I got from the internet over the text. I'm going to just drag the boxes to size it over the text. I'm going to change the opacity so I can see the text through the image. I'm going to enlarge it a little bit so I can see better. And then I'm going to choose the Erase tool and you will say yes to rasterize. That allows you to manipulate both layers. And using the erase tool, I'm essentially erasing the image I placed over the text to reveal the text that I want people to be able to read. So now I'm going to change the size of the eraser. I'm going to create these kind of river connections between the text boxes, like the Tom Phillips examples I showed earlier. I'm going to drag those to connect those text boxes. I'm going to change the opacity there. The image is gone. Now all that's left are the phrases and words that I want visible. And then I can export this as a JPEG. Click Save, and it will save to your downloads file. So there it is. And now you have your photo editing software erasure. Thank you for taking the time to explore erasure poetry with me today. I hope you found it interesting, the idea that you can create a poem without writing anything yourself. Now we explored different ways to create an erasure poem. We talked about different reasons why a poet might choose the form of erasure, including to create social or political commentary based on the manipulation of a very specific source text, 
like Tracy Smith's use of the Declaration of Independence. Now, a question may have arisen for you while you watched this video or created your erasure. Isn't this plagiarism? Well, it isn't plagiarism, and it is not for a couple of reasons. One being that many of the texts used by the erasure poets are so old that they're out of copyright, and it's legal to use any portion of that text. Also, when you create an erasure, you are using so little of the source text that you are creating a wholly original piece of art that bears very little relationship to the source text and so has no legal reproductions. You may come up with your own techniques to create erasure. You may enjoy showing these erasure techniques to friends or family. And you will also notice that means that you are surrounded by potential poems. Thanks again for taking the time and see you at the next poem. Thank you for working with me today. I hope you will choose to work with Snow City Arts again soon.